Hi, I'm Radek, I'm a developer advocate at QuickNote, and in this video I will walk you through what is an ABI, what is the difference between ABI and API, what are all the elements of the ABI, and two ways how to generate an ABI of a smart contract. Ready? Let's go! If you prefer written content, you can read this as a guide on quicknote.com. The link is in the description along with the link to the code used in the video. And to start with, let's define what is an ABI. The acronym stands for Application Binary Interface. But what is it really? When you write a smart contract, you write it in a high-level language like Solidity or Viper, and then it needs to be compiled into bytecode so that you can put it on blockchain. EVM, Ethereum virtual machine, doesn't work with code, it works with bytecode. So there needs to be a way to translate high-level functions into bytecode and back. And in order to do that effectively, there needs to be a point where code meets bytecode and where everything is precisely described, all the function names, all the smart contract operations, everything that the code can do, how it can do it, and what it gets in return. In essence, it shows what functions are available, what do you need to pass to those functions so that it can be translated into bytecode. And when EVM does its job, and returns the response, ABI provides a format on how to interpret that response and how to get into a human readable content. If it's still not clear, it will be clear very soon when I will show you an example. So what is the difference between ABI and API? API defines how two pieces of software can talk to each other and understand each other. ABI is similar, but it is at a lower level. It's a binary interface between two pieces of software, in this case a smart contract and an EVM, Ethereum virtual machine that needs to talk to each other and understand each other. A few more differences is API is described using a specific programming languages, often more than one, and it can also include not only a description of functions, but also conventions for their use. ABI, on the other hand, describes precisely how to encode function names, how to pass parameters to functions, how to retrieve the return value, how to understand that value, and how to lay out data structures, size, alignment, offsets, everything else, and also how to throw and handle errors and exceptions. So this is theory. Let's see how it looks in practice. There are two types of smart contract ABIs. One is for a function and one is for an event. There are some similarities between them, but a function and an event are very different. So that's why there are two types of ABIs. Now let's go and see all the elements of an ABI of a function. First, a function type. Type defines the type of function and there are a few of them. There is an ordinary function, but there are a few special ones like constructor, receive, or fallback. And ABI clearly distinguishes if it's a constructor or a normal type of function. Name defines the name of a function. Input is a large entity. It's an array of objects which defines parameters. And there could be many parameters. Each object in that array has a name and a type. The name defines what the parameter is named, and the type is string or uint256 or boolean. For example, uint256 balance, uint is a type, and balance is the name of that input. But the object can also have components in itself. And if it does, then the type of component is tuple, and then again, inside that tuple, same thing, name and type of the component, which then again can have either a tuple or a normal type like uint or string or whatever else. It's easier to show an example. There's a name function, it has the object inputs, and inside that object there are parameters. The first one is named s, but it's a tuple, so there is a parameter inside the parameter. So inside that there is a variable a, which is uint256, a variable b, which is an array of uint256, 
and another one is C, which is another nested one where it has U went to 56x and U went to 56y. So it can go as deep as you need and each time it goes deeper and type is tuple and then you have more parameters inside. So when you send inputs you get also outputs and it's similar in structure to inputs with names, types and components. State mutability defines the mutability of a function which could be pure that it does not read or write to blockchain view which can read from blockchain but not write to it non-payable is default and you do not need to state it in your code like pure view or payable it's just assumed that if you don't mention it it's non-payable and it can both read and write to blockchain and the last one is payable it's a function that can also accept ether and read and write to blockchain Note for constructor and fallback, named and output are blank. And for fallback, even the input is blank. So if you see that the function has no name, then it's either a constructor or fallback, depending on context. So that's the ABI of a function. ABI of an event is similar. The type is only one here. It's an event. Name defines what the event is named. Inputs are similar in a way that there is a name input, there is a type input, and there is a components input. And there is one more, which is indexed. And this is a Boolean, which is true if it's part of the logs topics, and it's false if it's part of the logs data. An event can also be anonymous, and it's declared in the contract code. Okay, now we know all the elements of an ABI. It's time to generate an ABI and read through it. There are two ways to do it. The first one is an easier one with Remix and the second one is with Celsi. Let's start with Remix. Here we have a simple hello world type of contract. It has a variable message. It has a constructor where we set the message and then it has two functions. One is setting the message and one is getting the message. So it's quite easy. Let's see how the ABI looks like. To get the ABI, we first need to compile the smart contract. Here, compile hello world. It's compiled, green check mark, everything went well, and we have now an ABI here. Let's copy and see how it looks. So here's the ABI code. Now that we know the elements of the ABI, it's quite easy to understand the smart contract without even looking at the contract code. For example, let's start from the top and go through all the elements here. The first one is type constructor. There's no function name, so we know that this is a constructor and it's non-payable and it doesn't take any input. Second one, the type is a function, so we are looking at the function here. Function name is get message, so it reads a string from blockchain and returns it. We didn't even have to look at the code. ABI tells us all of that. And the last one is type function. What's the function name? It's set message. It doesn't return anything, so we are setting the message, so we are just writing to blockchain. We are not expecting any return. And what are we writing to blockchain? We are writing a string type of message. And that's it for a simple type of smart contract, but it's exactly the same even for the most complicated smart contract. You can have a look at what functions are there, what they are passing to blockchain, to EVM, what they are expecting in return, what are the function names, and all the parameters inside those functions. And the same goes for the events that are emitted during the smart contract lifecycle. So what is the second way to generate an ABI of a smart contract? Remix is good for simple type of contracts, but when we are working on something more complicated and we are working on local machine with many different smart contract files, it's easier to work locally. So instead of using Remix compiler for smart contracts, we will need to have one locally if you don't already have one. And the compiler is Sol C. Let's see if we have Sol C. Let's check the Node.js version first, 16.15. Let's see if we have Solc.js. We don't, so let's install it. How do we do that? 
npm install solc. Let's do it globally, solc.js. Now let's create an ABI. solc.js file name dot sol ABI. Let's see, we have hello world dot sol, solc.js, hello world dot sol ABI, and it's done. It's here. It's not formatted as nicely as when we got it from Remix, but it's exactly the same information, exactly the same type of output that we saw previously. And we can format it a little better. Let's say YAML. And here again, type constructor, function get message, function set message. Exactly the same as before. So now you know ABI. You know all the elements of the ABI. You know how to talk to smart contracts and also how to understand what the smart contract is doing without even seeing the code. Now go and have fun with smart contract programming and see you soon.